I've been feeling quite sluggish and like um, lacking in energy. And I know this is directly correlated with the lack of exercise this year. And all I've been doing as of late is like walks, um, which for me, I just don't think it's enough. Like I don't feel strong. I don't feel very capable. I look through Instagram sometimes and I'm like, oh, I'd love to be that level of kind of fit, you know? And then I sit there and I think like, why can't I be? Like what's actually stopping me? What's actually stopping me? I'm stopping me. at my internet family and welcome back for another habits i formed in my 20s video if you're already familiar with this channel you know that i like to cut to the chase in these videos because there's always so much to cover there is a playlist of all past episodes linked down in the description box we have done skincare sexual habits food habits relationship habits makeup habits a little christmas gift from me to you and if you'd like to give me something in return a little thumbs up would go a long way to help you granny out because i'm swimming in a sea of millionaire teenagers on this website lads you need to help me out. If you are new here, I would love if you could subscribe and I'll give you the tiniest bit of context. When I was 19, I looked like this. I couldn't walk for five minutes without being out of breath. I felt like shit. I slept all day, I ate all night, and I didn't give a shite about my body. Right, <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna start with the broader concepts and we're gonna work our way down to the more specific nuggets of wisdom. And yeah, I hope this video will be extremely valuable for you. This first point is a big one. Basically, I formed a very unhealthy habit throughout my, the, like the first half of my 20s that I actually had to spend the rest of my 20s breaking and changing this habit. And that was a combination of exercising for the wrong reasons and associating exercise purely with burning food. I know. I wanted to enjoy working out. I wanted to love treating my body well. I had many issues with my self-image and as you know, I struggled with eating disorders. So aesthetics were largely driving my motivation to pursue fitness at the time. You know, I did also want a lot of control, an unhealthy level of control, I would say. It is fine if there's a little bit of that in there, but I am here to tell you that an obsession around how you look is not conducive to form a positive exercise habit. Intrinsic motivation involves doing something because it's personally rewarding to you. And extrinsic motivation involves doing something because you want to earn a reward or avoid a punishment. During university in my early 20s, I learned about the importance of intrinsic motivation. And when it came to fitness, I set out to balance these motivations, you know? Examples of extrinsic gym motivation are, oh, I wanna have a perfect beach body for my holiday. I want to look this certain way so I will attract a romantic partner or having the belief that a certain physique will give you more status and um, these things alone they're not it okay they're not it examples of intrinsic motivation you feel extreme joy and pride in yourself finishing a workout you can't get enough of the endorphins that come after a workout you love that burn and muscle fatigue that you feel when you're lying in bed after exercising you know you feel safe walking down the street as a woman the knowledge that you're doing all you can to prevent disease like these things are intrinsic motivation my focus with exercise shifted from my weight and how i looked to my well-being and like the physical and mental benefits of moving my body and like everybody I obviously care about how I look and stuff like that but how I feel is just so much more important to me yeah for me I had to scrap that kind of end goal thing in my head like oh I'm going on a beach holiday and I'm going to do all these things before the beach holiday and then I'm going to give it all up after the beach holiday I scrapped all that and I replaced it with a drive to just continually improve and maintain a nice level of fitness yeah I replaced all of the old negative habits that I had formed, such as like running for an hour just because I'd eaten ice cream the night before, that kind of stuff. Got rid of all of it, replaced it with training happy, how I'd like to phrase it. What that means is moving my body in a way that makes me feel good, in a way that comes from a place of care and respect. Thing is, I can get very, very bored, so I really do have to mix it up. I go for walks and stuff, but I started lifting weights about two and a half years ago. Huge change in my exercise routine that made an 
enormous difference on my brain and my body. I do the odd high intensity interval training workout because long steady state cardio like cross country running I just find that extremely boring I don't mind going for the odd jog but it'll usually be a walk slash jog like just honestly just for fun like I, I go how my body feels there's no sense of torture at all around exercise you know spin class to me is hellish and then I know other people who adore it so it's about finding what you actually like doing. I'm gonna go into more specifics later in the video, but um, I wanna talk a bit about making exercise accessible. Not everyone can afford a gym membership. I'm very aware of that. I receive thousands of messages every month from you guys, like when I do post um, myself going to the gym and all that. And I do remember a time when I, I just didn't have access to a gym. I also hated the gym for a time in my life. There was a time when I wasn't mentally and physically in a position to, be going into an environment like that you know even now sometimes I don't have gym access like it when I'm traveling or when I'm just extremely busy and this is where at home workouts come in a lot of people make up a lot of excuses to get out of working out but um you know when I was in university I had a little mini trampoline that I used to do in my room I got a bunch of little dumbbells as one of my Christmas presents from someone and now I'm very proud to say that I am an ambassador for the world's number one rated fitness app called fit I've mentioned this in a recent video. There is a free version and a premium version with hundreds of classes and training plans from world-class trainers, some who you'll recognize like my favorite body positive queen from Instagram, Chessie King. She is fantastic and um, this app is ideal when I'm on the go or when I'm just bored and I want to change it up and do a workout that I haven't done before. Fit's mission is to make fitness a habit for everyone so it was the perfect sponsor for this video and I'm delighted to be working with them. They've got Hit so high intensity interval training. Ah, three, I'm ready. Hit three. I'm not ready. Two, four, no. They've got yoga, strength training, combat, pilates, weights, and breath work. Forming a habit of fitness is so much more important than motivation alone. And I think that when you're starting out and it's not yet a habit, like for me, it's like brushing my teeth or going to buy food exercises you know I will just do it no matter what but when you're starting out seeing your heart rate your reps your calories burned and having a trainer kind of egg you on those things can be the push that you need and research shows that stats are proven to push you 22% harder also perfect if you're looking to up your game like I am and guess what your girl has a freebie for you. So Fit is offering a free month of premium when using my link, which is on the screen here, and it's linked down below in the description box, also pinned in a comment down below. Remember, tailbone tucked, core nice and engaged, nice long spine. My next habit would be slowly investing in your gear. And I even have a little workout bag now that is full of all my exercise essentials. I have gloves. I always have some kind of notebook where I'm tracking my progress. I have a reusable water bottle. I have knee protector thingy my bobbies, all that good stuff. And I've been slowly adding to my workout gear wardrobe for years. I have so many mismatching outfits, but you know, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you're wearing. Though I do like to wear things that make me feel nice. So I do have a few cute little sets, but the most important part of my workout bag, my workout stuff is my playlist. I am not really able to work out properly without good music. Mainly when I'm doing my weightlifting, getting through my reps and sets, I need some loud, either synthy or metal or like rock music to just really push me through. And I would love if you could comment down below your favorite song for gym listening. I will be sure to add it to my exercise playlist. This next one ties a little bit into what I spoke about at the beginning of the video, but giving myself time to learn form and to gradually improve was really important because I think when a lot of us start out, we, we just kind of expect that we'll pick it all up really quickly and within two months, we're gonna feel totally different, look totally different, be able to lift enormous weights. It doesn't just take time, but it's also not linear. Like, you know, my progress sometimes dips. I have to be okay with that. And I think the only alternative is to be like, oh, I failed, I must give up. I must just be a potato and stay on the couch forever. That's literally your only alternative when you think about it. There is no other alternative other than to just continue on. And that's why it's not always about 
going on this upward trajectory. A lot of the time it's about just maintaining. And yeah, that's why my first point was so important. I have seen enormous improvements in my lifts over time, in my general fitness when I do high intensity interval training stuff, in how I feel if I'm doing a run, like a charity run or something like that. Like I'm definitely a lot fitter now because it's become a habit because I go easy on myself if I fail. I don't even think about it as that word. I just think about life as what it is. It's life. It's not always going to be perfect and rosy and work in and around your perfect gym routine plans with your perfect split and your oh, I'm doing shoulders today and then the next day I'm doing calves. Like, no, bitch. I highly recommend tracking your progress and not being put off when it's not constantly going up, you know? Tracking over time enables you to see the little victories and to celebrate the little victories is so important. I won't spend long on this point, but it's really important to bear in mind, don't follow crappy, uninformed people on the internet who hype up all of these ridiculously unnecessary little exercises, you know, find people who are qualified, who know what they're talking about and who give really good quality advice. I'll throw some names up here now on the screen of people that I recommend that you go and follow who just give really sound advice um, and I learn from them all the time. One thing I learned in my late 20s was how important stretching and activation exercises are. After a workout I will always properly stretch my muscles but before a workout I'll work on activating the muscle group that I'm going to be working on. I am a quad dominant lady and my glutes, my bum, is it's a very weak muscle for me so I have to do a lot of uh, waking in it up. I invested in a band that I keep in my exercise bag that I spoke about earlier and I will do just different activation exercises that I found online from fitness trainer people. A lot of gyms have these bands so you don't have to go and buy one but I just kind of like to have it even for at home sometimes because it helps me so much with mind muscle connection mind muscle connection i could almost do an entire video about that alone it is so important to really focus on the muscle that you're working out and to be very aware through your movements to kind of slow things down so you can really feel it in the exact right place that's a term you can now go and do a bit of research on um and then the habit of believing in yourself that you can be consistent because for me starting and stopping a lot was a lesson that my actions were misaligned with my wants. You know, I didn't want to be fit enough. I didn't want to be fit for the right reasons. Falling off the wagon doesn't mean you have lost all your progress. And like, you have to think about every day like a clean slate. I always do this. Every morning that I wake up, I'm like, right, today it is like a fresh sheet of snow and I can either not walk on that snow, not do anything that day, or I can run all around it and leave lots of imprints. I have just completely fallen in love with training. I used to just go and I would kind of go through the motions and go on my phone and not work out with any kind of level of intensity. But the thing is, I had to do that. I, I had to give myself time to allow fitness to become a habit so that I wouldn't keep stopping and starting. So I would keep doing it consistently. And now when I go, I really, really, really push myself with intensity, you know? Sometimes I scream on that last rep and I love it. I love that feeling so much. If you are a gal who is intimidated by the weights section of the gym and you're really nervous about going in there and you think everyone's going to be staring at you and watching you and judging you, you need to do some power poses before you go to the gym. I walk into my gym like Conor McGregor walks anywhere. I, I honestly do. And it's it's mind over matter. It really, really is. It It's up here. If you go in there and approach those weights with confidence, all of your worries and care... Oh, I'm popular. Hi. Sorry, but yeah, all of your worries and stuff will just melt away because at the end of the day, everyone in the gym is focusing completely on their own workout and their own stuff, you know? Why would you allow what they think to dictate your actions? Why would you allow those fears to prevent you from doing something that is so good for you? Own the gym. Own the gym. Walk in there like it's your house. I, that's I, that's just what I do. I started doing power poses years ago to become more confident, mainly with public speaking, but it really helps with going into the gym. Like, I stand there and I'm all... I do them all 
and they really, really help. These last two exercise habits that I formed in my 20s were key for me and I can't believe I forgot to mention them when I was filming this video, so I'm adding them on here. Firstly, finding a gym buddy or even ideally a gym posse, like a little group of people to go with, your partner, your friends, any family member, members. It makes such a difference because there are days where I would find it much easier to sit on the couch and when I know that I've committed to going with someone or with a group of people, often they'll drag me along when I don't wanna go or I'll drag them along when they're having a motivation slump because these slumps do happen as I said progress is not linear I almost always go with my fiance and we have such a laugh in the gym and he really does give me that spark that makes me push myself more it's kind of like training along with the trainer on the fit app like just having someone else there to get you through the last few reps you know it makes a massive massive difference and lastly it is so important to fuel your body with the right nutrients before and after a workout to maximize your performance and your recovery recovery. Carbs help maximize your body's ability to use glycogen to fuel short and high intensity exercise while fat helps to fuel your body for longer exercise sessions. And we need all our macronutrients. Protein is our best ally when it comes to muscle growth and repair. I always get in my protein after hitting the weights and I make sure to eat something really filling about an hour before I exercise. And this is a non-negotiable in my book. Those are some general fitness habits that I formed in my 20s. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. It really, really helps out my channel. Let me know if you would like to see full workout videos or I can throw in my workouts into what I eat in a day videos where I take you through every step of the workout. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and yeah, I'll see you guys again in another video very, very soon. Thank you.